Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the SOAP Web Service Tutorial Series. In this video we will see the basic components of the SOAP Web Services. And this video is mostly going to be the theory, so just bear with me. The main component on which the SOAP Web Service depends heavily is the XML. Now in fact, it uses the XML format to ex exchange information and hence forms the basis of the SOAP Web Service. Now because XML is not tied to any particular application or language or platform. Therefore, XML messages can be used in all the environments by any application. For example, a Windows C++ program can create an XML document representing a message and send it to a Unix-based Java program and change the state of that Java program depending on the message what we are sending. Now, so provides a standard for the structure of its XML messages which it uses to exchange information. We just can't send the message in any XML format. It has to be in proper predefined standard format. So suppose if we are using SOAP for the remote procedure call where one program makes a procedure call to another by passing some arguments and receiving the return values. In that case the XML messages will be a representation of the parameters passed to the call or the response values which are returned from, the, from that call. Now these XML messages are actually called the SOAP messages. Now as I was already saying that these messages have to be in some standard format or standard structure. Now it consists of an envelope and inside envelope will have the header which is called the SOAP header and this SOAP header is actually optional so we can skip this header block in the SOAP message. And, and the envelope then contains a body which is known as a SOAP body. Now this, is, this is a required block. We cannot have a SOAP message without a body or an empty body. So as a whole a SOAP message will have a SOAP envelope that can contain an optional SOAP header and a required SOAP body. Now the SOAP header is used to contain the information related to the SOAP message. So it may include some routing information which will guide on where to forward or route the SOAP message within different nodes of a distributed application. It may also contain authentication credential or the authorization information or it may also include some transaction information as the transaction number or so related to the message. So this information will actually give the server more information on how to process the SOAP body or the message. The SOAP body as we would have already guessed it contains the actual message to be delivered or processed. Now one more thing to note is that the SOAP message format is same for the request or the response. Even the response has the envelope and the SOAP header and the body inside it. There is one more special type of SOAP message and that is known as the SOAP fault. It basically represents the errors that may have occurred during the processing of a SOAP message in the server side. So it comes in the response and it contains the information like the error code and the error messages etc. About the error that occurred during the processing of the SOAP message. The error could come for the reasons like if the message is not in the correct format or it could not process or understand the SOAP header or if the message contains some invalid authentication credentials etc. Now the only requirement for the SOAP fault is that it must come as a first child element in the SOAP body element. So envelope will have header and the body in it and the body can have the SOAP fault in it. I will see all these SOAP messages in detail in subsequent videos. For time being I am just trying to give an overview of the SOAP messages and that's how a SOAP message will look like. There is one more component which is worth mentioning is the SOAP encoding for the RPC style SOAP. Now in RPC style SOAP what we do is from our client code we call a method of some class which is there in some remote system. So while calling the method we may pass some parameters and it may return some response object. But the SOAP exchanges its information in SOAP messages which are in XML format. So we can clearly see that there is a need of encoding of suppose a Java data type to an XML format. 
and this is called the SOAP encoding and this encoding implies to the primitive data types and even to the Java objects we'll talk talk about this SOAP encoding in detail in, in later videos as far as the transport protocol is concerned SOAP doesn't care what transport protocols are used to ex exchange the messages there could be implementations of SOAP which could provide the ability to exchange the SOAP messages through HTTP, FTP, SMTP or MQ but HTTP is by far the most common transport protocol used to exchange the SOAP messages so SOAP request message will be sent to the HTTP server as the HTTP request and the server would return the SOAP response message in the HTTP response there is one more important component of the SOAP web service which requires a mention here and that is WSDL WSDL it is known as the web service description language and it is one of the main components of the SOAP web service it is a language to describe everything about the web service if we have the WSDL for any of the SOAP web services then we can know what the web service does and what are the methods it exposes and how we can call those methods like how many arguments we would need to pass and what would be the return, return type of those uh, methods etc etc so we can say it acts like an interface to the underlying web services it actually makes it easier to consume the web services in fact there are tools available which simplify in building clients for the existing web service using the WSDL even there are also tools available for generating the WSDL from the web service so we don't have to manually create the WSDL descriptions of the web services although we can use SOAP without the WSDL but WSDL descriptions of our services make our life a little bit easier for consuming those services we will talk about the various parts of the WSDL and how they are created and, and, and how they are used to access the web service in later videos there is one more important component of SOAP web service and that is UDDI now we discussed about the WSDL which is used to describe a web service but the question is how to find out which web service to use for our application now there has to be a certain place where the information about the web services are kept for the services which are exposed publicly so that the consumers can discover the services they need now, UDDI is exactly used for this purpose it is a searchable registry of services and their descriptions and they even contain the visual of those services through which we can know how to use those services so these are the main components of the SOAP web service which we went through in a very high level we will look into each one of them in detail in later videos this is it for this video i hope you liked it thanks for watching